Hello. Welcome to Ladbrook Church. We've just completed 14 months of major repairs to the building, both stonework repairs, you may have already seen the video on that, and glass repairs, the subject of this talk. There have been other repairs too, most notably to the porch. Its new doors have been much admired. Seven windows have been repaired, all of them at the chancel end of the building. Four of these windows had plain historic glass like that on the left, while three were stained glass. This talk focuses on the great east window, but the other two stained glass windows do get a brief mention. The stained glass in the Great East Window was made in 1876 by the Birmingham company Hardman & Co. It was put in during the Gilbert Scott repairs, replacing earlier 19th century glass, and there would have been other glass before that for many centuries. As there were to be some repairs to the stonework at the base of the window, the plan had been to remove all the glass for studio repair, but based on what happened to the other smaller windows, we had a rethink. I was quite surprised to discover that this window didn't have just three huge pieces, but each vertical section is made of a number of separate panels. The second opinion on the best way to repair it advised that only two of the panels the top and bottom ones on the left-hand side needed re-leading. The others could be repaired where they were. The photo on the right shows the lower panel removed and the gap filled with plastic while the glass was away. Now, a short video showing how the upper panel was taken out. This is just the highlights. It took several hours of very careful working to remove the panel without damaging it. Mortar is chipped away. The join next to the panel is opened. The panel is lifted out. Our specialist Holywell Glass were much more careful than the people who had put the window in before. Cement mortar had been used. That sets rock hard and when you need to do any work you risk damaging the glass. The other way in which they were much better was by taking careful measurements. They made sure that the repaired panel actually fitted the hole. The Victorians had done a botched job. You could see here that the lead edge has been taken away and they've even nibbled away some of the glass to make it fit. You can see the fragments held together with sticky tape. That was necessary to get all of the panel out in one piece. So let's move on to the studio. There each panel was photographed and two rubbings made of it, one rough, the other more precise. As the glass pieces were taken out of the old lead, they were placed on the rough rubbing. The more precise one was used as the template for reassembly after the individual pieces had been cleaned. Let's see some re-leading in this next video clip. Cleaned glass pieces are on the rough template. The missing ones on the left hand side have already been transferred to the re-leading template. Notice there's a before photo and also written notes, in this case about the join to the panel above. You can see the edging lead is firmly held against wooden battens and horseshoe nails are used to hold parts within the design just temporarily. The end of the lead came is trimmed so it fits close against that already in position and then the lead is bent around the glass. This cutting and bending is repeated until all the glass and lead is positioned. Then every joint is soldered and the panel is waterproofed by working putty into the gaps between the glass and the lead. Some border pieces were too 
damage to repair, so replacements were made. The base glass was chosen to match thickness and colour and an opaque layer painted on. How dark it is depends on a lot of things. The pigment itself, its concentration, the amount applied and temperature used to fuse or bake it onto the glass surface. Because the fused pigment stays on the surface of the glass, it's done on the inside of the window, away from the weather. Even so, with age, pigment may flake off and the design become lost. Hardman windows are notorious for this, but ours are pretty good. The yellow centre of the border design is produced by a silver stain. The colour again depends on many factors and in the middle picture you can see samples used to decide what to do. The recipe, the concentration, the temperature etc. The thing to note is this yellow colour is a stain. It's different from a pigment. The stain actually penetrates the glass so it can be painted on either side of it. A template of the design has been drawn and the new glass is placed over it. The pigment is painted on by hand, a very steady hand. After the pigment has dried, the narrow lines will be cut out using a very fine tool. Repairs often involve mending cracks and there are various techniques for this. You can see several of them on these before and after photos of St Cuthbert from our medieval window. If a piece of glass cracks, you can treat the fragments as separate pieces when you re -led them. They did that before, but right across St Cuthbert's face it's not very pretty. An alternative is to resin, that is glue, the join. It's not very strong, so needs some extra protection, which I'll show you in a minute. As you can see in the after picture, that join across his face is now almost invisible. A more robust technique than resin is to use a very thin adhesive copper foil between the fragments, with a small amount of lead solder over it on the glass surfaces. It gives a thin dark line as you can see in the after picture on the right hand side. That window with St Cuthbert contains a mixture of Victorian and medieval glass. This photo is the outside surface before repair. The older glass, which is in the lower part of the picture, has weathered. It has a pitted surface and is quite fragile. During the repairs to prevent further deterioration, the older glass has been backplated that is, a thin piece of new plain glass was cut to the same shape, attached to the old glass round the edge to give a slightly thicker but now much stronger piece. The new glass is on the outside and will protect the old from the wind and the rain. You can't see it's there from inside, in fact the only sign is that the outer surface of these pieces is now shiny rather than rough. Backplating also allows you to reinforce the design as Chapel Studio did on parts of our ascension window where the text was becoming illegible and the detail of some faces lost. The missing dark sections were painted on the new glass before it was joined to the original and leaded up. When you look through both together you see the design as intended but the original is still there within the window. So having had a glimpse of what happens in the studio, we now return to Ladbrook. Here you can see the upper panel when it came back from the studio. All the lead joints have been soldered and there are copper ties to hold it onto the supporting bars that have been soldered on too. Do you remember the broken glass border on the right when it was removed? Now we're looking at the glass from the other side so that edge is on the left. The broken fragments have been replaced with new narrow pieces and a proper leaded edge all around. The lead on the right is extra wide because there have been some gaps between the glazing and the stonework before. 
Now another video. Here's the hole and the old supporting bars which had rusted inside the stone and caused it to fracture have been removed with new bronze ones prepared. A preliminary check. Removing excess lead from the old joint. Fine tuning the stonework. The new join, the supporting bar positioned and the panel tied to it. And it's mortared in with lime mortar. To see the glass as intended, we didn't just need repairs, but also to clean off the cobwebs, stone dust and a lot of general dirt, including candle soot. Inside, the conservators used a 50-50 mix of acetone and deionized water, plus lots and lots of cotton wool swabs. Outside, dust was brushed off, the surface rinsed with deionized water, and then a final dust to polish it. We're not quite finished yet. There were a few cracks in panels that never went to the studio, which were repaired on site. Silicon sealant is put over the break and a thin lead strap on top. The last stage was to put up new protective grills replicating the old fastenings. And there we have our repaired window. To summarise, I've shown you a little about carefully removing panels, work in the studio, returning the panels and on-site repairs. I hope you found it interesting. Can I close by thanking Holywell Glass who repaired the great east window and Chapel Studio who repaired the others. And also thanks to all our fundraisers and donors who've made the repairs possible, including lottery players who've supported us through the National Lottery Heritage Fund. And thank you for watching.